Well, welcome to the official start of Calculus. Congratulations, you made it in the class. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about a, a, a review, a review of a lot of the Math 2 concepts and some basic algebra concepts that you really need to have down in order for you to be successful in Calculus. The first place we're going to start is section 0 0.1, chapter 0. We're going to talk about lines, just basic lines. We're going to go through some families of curves. We'll get into some trig functions, your favorite, right? And then we'll, we'll continue Calculus. So. Lots of weird lines. There. What's special about a line? What do you know about lines? It, well, they have infinite points, but specifically you need at least two, right? What else do you know about lines? Do they curve at all? Do they curve lines? Do they end? What, what do you need to know about a line in order to graph it? You need two points, or you need one point and specifically one other thing. You gotta have slope. Lines have slope. They're straight, they don't end, they have slope. In fact, the slope is what we're going to talk about for the first part of today. The slope is pretty much how a line rises or falls. Now, you might have been walked through this a long time ago. We're going to go really quickly through how to find the slope of a line. And we're going to invent the formula ourselves. So let's take a, a generic line. And we'll pick two random points on it. We're not going to be specific on it because in order to create a formula, you can't really say something specific like any particular point. We need to work for all points. Can you tell me, if I've got two points, how can I, I make a distinction between these? What, what does every point have? Coordinates. coordinates. What are the coordinates somewhere over here? What are, what are the coordinates generally for, for a point? X1. X1. Okay. So we know that any point that we draw is going to have the coordinates x, y. This one will, and this one will. But the problem is we need some way to tell a difference between those, those two points. How are we going to do it? What do you think? Numbers. With some, yeah, with some numbers. What are those, what numbers? One two. Are they going to go on top of our x or below our x? In place. Where now? now? If I put them up here, we're, we're talking about x to the first power. So we're going to put an x to the an x1 and an x2, a y1 and a y2, saying that this is our, our first point and our second point, whatever those points may be. We can't use real numbers because then it wouldn't work in general for any two points. Can you tell me along the x-axis, how far is, is this? One? One. If, if this is the point x1, y1, how far is that? Yeah, it's x1 for sure. How far is this point? Yeah, if, are, are you guys with me on this? No, you have, you're, you're all right so far. If you're not, go like this. Are we okay or no? All right. If this was like the point uh, 3 comma 5, <coughs> to get to 3 comma 5, you'd go over 3 and up 5, right? So then this would be 3. This is not 3 comma 5, it's x1, y1. So we're going over x1. How far are we going up? Good. And here? Now, when we talk about slope, typically a long time ago when you were first introduced to slope, you, the teacher probably said, yeah, it's how your, your, your line rises or falls. But then they also said, slope is defined as what over what? Rise. Let's go ahead, let's try to identify what our rise is and what our run is. What would you say would be our rise? This way? This way. So if we find the difference between those two numbers over there, we're going to find the rise for our line. What is the difference between those two numbers over there? How do you find the difference, this distance here? Sure, yeah, if this was 10 and this was 3, the distance between them would be what? Yeah, you'd subtract them, right? You'd do 10 minus 3. So here we're going to go, well, it's not 10 and 3. It's y2 and y1. So our rise we're going to call y2 minus y1. Can we do the same thing with the run? Mm -hmm. How far is our run? What's that distance represent or represented as? X2 minus x1. I thought you were going to answer. You instead you sneezed. I was like, she's off. And then, pew, darn it. Let's hope for a good one. Yeah. We got x2 minus x1 for sure.
Does that look familiar? Yeah. yeah, if we use the letter instead of the word slope, what letter am I talking about here? Mm -hmm. If we use M instead of slope, we got our formula. Which is kind of, you've seen it before, right? And you, you've probably seen it, have you seen it invented before like this? If you haven't, well, this is something new for you. If you have, well, you've seen it again. This is how you invent the slope formula. The reason why we couldn't use specific points is because we wanted to be able to plug in any two points that I give you, right? So using that, if you call your, your points x1, y1, x2, y2, you can find a slope for anything. Now, the, the one reason why I invented this for you is I want to show you that we can actually create an equation from that, uh, uh, an equation for a line from that slope formula. So let's talk just a bit about equations. What we're going to do is we're going to manipulate that formula by fixing one point, we're going to be able to get the formula for a line. So here's what we're going to work with. We're going to start with m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this point. Say this is any specific one point and let the other one float. What that does is it changes this formula into this formula. Instead of y2 minus y1, there's no more y2. You see, here's the thing. A fixed point is a point with a little number under it, a subscript. Like this would be a specific fixed point, x1, y1. This is a specific fixed point, x2, y2. What I'm doing by fixing one point, only one point, I'm saying that's the one point I'm fixing, x1, y1. I'm going to let the other one be floating. So I'm going to erase that uh, y2 and the x2. That means I'm going to have y minus y1 over x minus x1. That says one point's fixed. This point is going to be formulaic. It means you can plug in an x and get out a y. You ever seen an equation for a line? Not your head, you've all seen it because you're all here, right? It has places for you to plug in x and, and get out y, doesn't it? So we need that inherently, otherwise we don't have the equation for a line. We have a specific two points. We don't want that, we want the equation for a line. Now here's the cool thing. Is there a way that you can solve for y minus y1. How would you get rid of this denominator? Do what now? Someone said I can just have bad ears. See? Multiply it. Multiply it. On one side or both sides? So if I multiply this by... Oh, that worked. Cool. x minus x1. And over here, x minus x1. Is this gone? You guys are so quiet. Is this gone? Yeah, they can't yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. On the right hand side, tell me what I'm left with. Y minus y minus. On the left hand side, I'm going to reorganize this. I'm not going to have x minus x1 times m. I'm going to have m times x minus x1. You still okay with that so far? Sure. Multiplications, commutative, doesn't matter what I have first, what I have second, no problem. Maybe you're not familiar with it written this way, but I'll bet you've seen this before. Yeah, what is that called? Slope intercept. No, no, it's not slope intercept. Point slope. Point slope. Why is it called point slope? Mathematicians are very unoriginal. It's called point slope because it's named after what you need to complete it. You need a point and the slope. That's why it's called point slope. So by manipulating our slope formula, interesting, isn't it? We use this. We fixed only one point, let the other one float, worked around a little bit. We now have point slope. Pretty useful stuff. Shall we, shall we do an example? Would you like to see something that we can use this stuff with? Yeah. I think you've seen it before. This should be reviewed for you. But let's go ahead. Let's see if we can first get the cobwebs out of your head because I know you weren't doing math over Christmas break, were you? Or holiday break, whatever you're doing. Were you doing math? No. I, was, I was. I was redoing this class to make it extra super special for you. You should feel honored. But let's go ahead and try to find the equation of the line that passes through these two points. We'll get the cobwebs of our head, we'll try to use the slope formula, and then use point slope. So what, what points? So find the equation. through these two points.
Whenever your teacher taught you how to find the equation of a line, they taught you you need, you absolutely have to have two things. You have to have one, what? If you have one point, very good. And somebody else, you also have to know the, get into the slope, or be able to find the slope. Firstly, do we have a point? Actually, we have two of them. We're, we're set, right? Do we have a slope? Is it given to you right now? Can you find it? Yes. Go ahead and find it. By the way, I usually do this. I'll walk around the room. If you need help at this point, let me know, because now would be a good time for me to help you. What I want you to do right now is find the slope. If you don't remember how to find the slope, you assign x1, y1 to one point, x2, y2 to one point, and plug it in that formula. Okay, go ahead and try that right now. Okay, let's see what y'all did. Just want the slope for now, we'll work on the equation in just a second. So as far as the slope goes, we need to pick one of these points to be x1, y1, another point to be x2, y2. You just gotta make sure it goes x, y, and it goes 1, 1, and 2, 2, right? Those numbers gotta be together. And you have to have an alphabetical order, you can't go y, x. Which is gonna be your x1? Do y'all pick negative 2 for your x1? It really doesn't matter, does it? I could pick this one as x1, but then that would have to be Y1. So once you pick one letter, the rest of them have to fall into place. Now typically people just want to make it easy, and they put this one, X1, Y1, X2, and Y2, which I'm guessing most of you did that one. The other way, you're going to get the same exact slope. It's just your, if you had a negative or a sign, it's going to be in the opposite spot. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and plug this in. We have Y2 minus Y1. What am I going to write down if I'm supposed to do Y2 minus Y1 right now? Two. Two, like that? Yeah. Minus, negative. Minus, okay, good. So we're subtracting, but that also has a negative sign. I'm going to be real careful about that. I'm going to put it in parentheses to show that I'm subtracting a negative right there. What is subtracting a negative? What's that become? Positive. Great, okay. Well, it, yeah, it ends up being addition. And then for x2 minus x1, we're going to have our 8 minus negative 2. Same idea. What is our 2 minus negative 3? How much do we get? Over? Can you reduce slopes? Absolutely. What is it? Okay, quick show of hands. How many people were able to find the, the slope? Good. That's starting to everybody. That's fine. If you're not, work on that later. Okay, revisit this. Try to follow through this example. See if you can do it on your own and then come up with that one half. Are we done? We, we're, we're about halfway there. Okay, we have the slope. Do we have a point still? If we've got a point and we've got the slope, we should be able to fill out point slope. It's actually the same exact formula as slope, we just have now fixed one point and we have the slope. It's kind of good. So we know we're going to be filling out y minus y1. Check it out. If you already have your y1, you can leave it. If you want to make it easier on yourself and not deal with those negatives, you could use that point. That'd be fine as well. It doesn't matter what point you have after you've already identified your slope. Here I'm going to stick with the same one to, to keep it kind of continuous for us. So we have y, what am I going to write? 